It's always love, man. Alumni come back and fuck with you, girl, man. I appreciate you for fucking rocking with us, man. Backstreet Co. Y'all go tap in, but fuck all that. We got my homie, man. Let everybody know who you is, where you from, and what you got coming. Man, it's KOG, man. Come alive out the North Asia's home. We can stand up at you. What's that? Mm. You know what I'm saying? What's going on with y'all, baby? Man. What's that plan in the background? Let the streets know, man. If anybody want to go tap in, what's that? Man, that's that old uh, Tears from Heaven right there. That's the last project <coughs> I dropped last year, right during like the pandemic and shit like that. Okay. So, that's what that is right there. I feel it, I feel it, man. Well, shit, we gotta go right into it, man. We gotta talk about the hiatus, man. Where you been, man? I've been missing you on the scene. I know you've been behind the scenes. You had life and shit happen, man. But just the hiatus with the music, man. Talk about that a little bit. Man. The high is I really expected to come back really soon as soon as I had dropped this last tape. And when I dropped the last tape, uh, Tears from Heaven did very good, very good. People always, you know what I'm saying, rotation was great, you know what I'm saying? People was committing me on all that shit. Mm. But uh, earlier this year, anybody that knows and knows what happened, I got in a wreck, a bad, bad car accident. Like right? where I had broke 12 ribs and I broke my arm. Awesome. Damn. So God is amazing, man, for you to be even on the back streets rocking with me, man. How long ago was that? Uh, February. February. So probably about what the world about six, seven months ago. Damn, are you were still recovering or? I heard every day. Damn. Like nigga, like when you got broken ribs, there's nothing they can't even do for you. That your body has to heal itself. Damn. So nigga, I didn't even know that shit. And by me not having insurance, nigga, they had me walking around, nigga, no bullshit, like a motherfucking. Two, three months with, with a broken arm. Damn. Before I even got, now I got plates and shit all in my arm and all that for the rest Damn. of my life. So, you know, it, it kind of moves a little different and all that shit, but shit, I'm blessed. So all I can say, you know, you be blessed, man. That, that shit crazy. So that happened during the pandemic, man. Was you in the wrong? Was it? Man, all right, look, I'm really going to tell you the story first, Cole. Like, nobody, this is the first time anybody's hearing this story. Like, if you know what happened, uh, you probably a close friend or family or something like that. But right. as far as interviews and with the rap shit, this first time y'all gonna hear. I, I actually it was the night before the Super Bowl, and uh, right. the night before the Super Bowl, I was going home. It was probably about 12, 1 o'clock at night or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I can get to the next exit. Shit, y'all gonna run out of gas. So when I ran out of gas, I called Triple A. Called Triple A, come uh, you know, get the gas, whatever, and all that. I was on the Beltway in like 290. For people that know in Houston, that's like an overpass. Right. You know what I'm saying? I pulled over to the side of the road and all that good shit. When I pulled over to the motherfucking side of the road, I called Triple A. Next thing I know, I was knocked the fuck out. I don't even remember getting hit. Mm -hmm. At all. All I remember is waking up. I, when I woke up, you know, you don't feel pain instantaneously. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, right. you, hit, you don't feel any shit out real. I wake up, I see my fucking radio. <laughs> like, my radio's hanging out. I'm like, damn, if I go to sleep and the crackhead try to cover my shit, right, 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 right. my radio or some shit. I'm like, damn, why the fuck my radio hanging out, my nigga? Man, I wake up. Damn. I, then I look to my love. I see a Hispanic woman. Her mouth just dropped. Damn, like, I guess she couldn't believe I was alive because yeah. I guess it had been so long since I had been knocked out and when I had woke the fuck up. Yeah. And when I had woke up, it was uh, the Hispanic lady and I was like, man, what the hell? And her mouth was just dropped. Mm -hmm. And I looked a little to the to the right a little bit further. It was a cop, a policeman. And I was like, damn, what's going on? He was like, man, I'm so sorry I hit you. What, a cop? The cop. Damn. The cop like that, I'm sorry I hit you. I'm sorry. He panicked. And then next thing I know, the other cop was right there. He was like, hey, can you open the door? And I was like, I tried to open the door, but my arms broke. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't open the door. They opened the door. They took me out. At that time, they got me in the ambulance. All I know is I'm going in and out the whole time. The whole time. They took me, uh, when I was going in and out, that probably was the first time in my life. I'd have been shot, prison, stabbed, all that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can honestly say I, I was begging for my life. Damn. Like, I'm going in and out, all I feel like, nigga, I'm not knowing what's going on, you know. I done just got hit by a motherfucking car, and it's all coming to me because the motherfucker that told me they hit me. So it's like, it's coming to me at that given time, and I'm like, damn, bro, what the fuck? And I'm begging 
died at that time. Oh my God, damn, I just want to live. God spared you, man. That was, and you, like you said, you'd have been shot all, all around all type of murderers, all type of shit. And for you to survive that, man, I, I'm guessing, and you know, everybody believes in something different, but I'm guessing you got a bigger purpose, man, still. Oh, know. I know. It, man. God got me here for a reason. Got to. How long did you shake back and like, fuck it, I got to get back to K, I got to get back to myself? Man, believe it or not, nigga, the, the next day I was trying to walk. Mm. I'm in the hospital trying to walk the next day. I'm like, fuck, man, I got too much shit to do. I can't, I got, only thing I could think about was what I was set out to do in this world. To me, and that's to do music and help my community and help, and help people. You know what I'm saying? So all I'm thinking about at that given time is like, damn, I gotta get back. Mm -hmm. I gotta get back. And the whole time I'm thinking about, ask anybody that know me, I'm, I'm telling the motherfucking people now, I'm, I'm a pen. I'm, I'm a pad, I'm ready to write. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to, all this is more to my story and more to let y'all know about what's going on. But I'm blessed. I, I thank God I'm still doing mm -hmm. So we're gonna get a big payout soon, man. <laughs> I'm hoping. Hey, hopefully. Man, nah, that's crazy, man. To go through something on that time <coughs> and then it to be, you know, the police involved, that could have been, a, you know, went a different way with all, you know, what type of has shit went on with George Floyd and so many others. So, man, I'm very thankful for him, though. Nah, for, sure. for real. Because I tell people, I'm, my ass that was nighttime, you know what I'm saying? One in the morning, 12, one in the morning. He could have left. Yeah. He could have easily said, fuck me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, he could have man. Not to be real, and I, I, I was thinking for stand up. Nah, for and I'm gonna say like out of all the messed up things you hear about cops, come and, on, bro. And all the stuff that we hear about, I, I can respect that you you stayed and you waited and you, you gave your insurance, you called your insurance company, all that. Damn, that's real. Bro. Like he didn't have to do all that. Like I tell people all the time, he, this cop did not have to do this. And I've had several encounters with the law in oh, bad bad ways and like. That was the first time a cop ever did anything helpful for me. For me. Yeah. And he could have helped save my life because, you know, if an ambulance would have came, who's to tell what could have happened? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Big back streets with cold shit, man. God bless you. I'm glad to see you still here, man. Prior to that, though, I was real happy to see because I'm big on that hell shit, man. You was on your journey, man. Oh, yeah, on the vegan dogs, shit. Yeah, the vegan shit. Yeah, yeah. Working out, walking, eating different and shit, man. Yeah. Have you found a way to get back to that? I know going through some type of shit like that, they can put you in all now, type man, of Man, bro, I lost at, all together, I lost like 60 pounds on mm. the vegan shit, bro. All right. And, like, and when I lost like 60 pounds, like, it was just about lifestyle change. Like, I wanted to feel better, you know what I'm saying? Like, Man, health is important. Most of people out there die like 50, 60 years old. I wanna live. You big what? I wanna live, no, bro. Real. I wanna have grandkids and kids and all that type of stuff, man. I wanna live, bro. So I, it's about changing. Like, yeah, man, I, I do do the vegan thing, and everybody that knows me, yeah, that's one thing I was doing. Mm -hmm. And like, just trying to get closer, you know what I'm saying, to healthy. Just like, yeah, to me, it made me feel better. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you get the weight up all that, man. It's a lot of stuff. You ain't got to go spend money on no surgery, man. Get, get in the gym, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Big back street shit, man. How <laughs> has the growth changed, man? Tears from heaven, man. You back on the scene with this music, but how have you feel like the growth has changed with your music? Man, most anybody that knows any KLG project is like a lot of pain and struggle type music. Mm -hmm. That's like what I'm, I, I'm bred from. And like on this new album that I'm giving people, it's called Therapy. It'll be out within the next month. In the next month, mm -hmm. I got videos with all that getting in rotation. We just getting it mixed, getting everything mixed and shit right now. But on this album, you're gonna see, even though I've been through all this stuff, I think I had more fun this album. Boogie Bad, he was a rapper too, you know what I'm saying? So Boogie Bad ass, what yeah, up, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Lil Boogie. So, and me and him, anybody that knows, we, we actually lived together like two, three years ago. We actually had a apartment and all that. So that kind of hurt me uh, too. You know, I'm kind of fucked up, but but I believe he watching over me too. So shit, I know my little nigga happy. I'm doing my thing. I'm, I'm out here walking. I don't, he called me right after my wreck and shit and was trying to make sure I was good and all that. So, you know what I'm saying? Man, this man, album, what made you title it? Yeah. Let me see it like real quick too. Therapy, man. Is it because of... You know, rank or is it just like Nah, I feel like music is my therapy. Okay. This is how I get through all this how I get through my plan. So man, I just want to, and the thing about it, people would expect I, I think I did exactly the opposite of what people expected. Cause a lot I know everybody's expecting to hit a sad record. Okay. And I'm not gonna give you a sad record. I'm about to give you the exact opposite. We're about to turn up, we're gonna have fun. 
we gonna have fun, we gonna rejoice, we alive, everybody living. You know what I'm saying? We gonna rejoice in this shit. It's just like in a funeral. Mm-hmm. You know when they at a funeral, what they usually say, oh, it's not supposed to be a, you know, how can I put it? It's not a, a sad. It's not a sad moment. We celebrating life. Right. So shit, I'm gonna celebrate on, on therapy. We mm-hmm. um, right. from the first track to the end, it tells the story of how what, what happens to Rick and everything, and all in between, gonna have fun with it. You know what I'm saying? Man, man, we got a lot of more followers now, man. So you gotta tell people how you got your name, man. Man, I, man, a lot of people know me from these freestyles and shit I be dropping and the music over the years, and I've been in the streets all my life, so man. It's crazy, like me and Cole were just saying when we did our interview two years ago, I guarantee she didn't think she'd be as far as she was, and I didn't think I'd be as far as I was at this time. Like a black man, I tell y'all all the time, right? Shit in the ghetto, this shit gonna always be here, unfortunately. But man, the ghost shit will be here. Exactly. Like, for real, I, and, for real. And I'm fucking bad about it. I tell people that's one reason I like. <coughs> because I always get they block chatting on them. I'm like, nigga, what is your block really done for you? I'm guilty, but I feel you. I, I got mine on me too. I'm guilty, I'm guilty too. Because a, a, a nigga told me that in prison. An mm-hmm. older nigga told me, like, bro, mm-hmm. when you die, nigga, what the fuck is your block? Your block still gonna be here. The same niggas. Now I remember a nigga telling me before, he was like, hey, fam, when you leave this motherfucker and get out of prison and come back, when you get back, them same niggas that was on the corner gonna be on that same corner. Big facts. And I bet you. Man, I came back. Still on the same corner. Trapped in the store. I'm like, God, on the machine. I want to man. I'm like, oh my God. I say, man, one line to me, my nigga. Like, you gotta grow it. Let me show you something. I'm, just, I'm not just talking to myself. I'm talking to everybody. Mm-hmm. This like, therapy is something I think black the black community lacks, my nigga. Cause we think that's some white shit. Mm-hmm. We think, oh, that's some white problem. White people go get therapy, nigga. You know how many niggas need to talk to the motherfucker. Yep. And let that shit out, the shit that they be seen in their life and happen to them. Man, nigga need to let that shit out. You need to talk to somebody. My nigga, seeing murders is not normal, my nigga. Seeing people get robbed and killed, yeah. shot is not normal, Take my nigga. Take your people, bro. That's <laughs> trying to get by the next day, eating bullshit. It kills us every single day, bro. I'll be here all day just talking about this shit. But we all fucked up, bro. We can't fault each other. That's why I'm glad you be speaking on growing and changing and Working out, even if you just make some another step, it's another nigga like that. Damn, he from the hood and he doing the shit, so I can do it too, man. But anti soul was when I first caught on to you before the other project, man. Yeah, yeah. That's an instant classic, man. Did you know with the music you were still gonna be here getting ready for therapy? Hey, let me show you something. A lot of niggas don't know this, and I'm gonna tell you this too because I believe I was driving anti soul. When when I was uh when I came over the last time I think as I saw that just dropped mm-hmm. when it was about to drop so mm-hmm. like, yeah it probably just dropped though like two years ago right mm-hmm. nigga I was homeless bro for going as I saw 